who is next? He's responsible for those wee tickle ups around two o'clock this morning. So, uh, your questions for Mark Quigley are very welcome after his presentation. If you've just joined us, just a quick recap on the format. Each of our speakers um, has been allotted 15 minutes for their presentation, and then you get 15 minutes for some rapid fire uh, questions and answers. Uh, we do have Jenny on the microphone duty, so she will never go to a, a round. We'll try and get up to the, uh, the tears as well. Uh, please keep your questions as punchy as possible, just so we can get through as many as we can. And just a reminder, all of the speakers, both from yesterday and today, uh, the sessions will be available so you can review them online on the shareanidea.org.nz website. We're just checking when they will go online, but um, it will be in the next couple of days, but I'll try and give you a bit more clarification on that in due course. All right, um, the aforementioned Mark Quigley is our next guest. He is a senior lecturer in active tectonics and geomorphology uh, in the Department of Geological Sciences at Canterbury University. Please welcome Mark Quigley. Thank you. Cheers. Is this working? Hello? Yep. Hey, thanks for coming. This is a great turnout. And you can tell that my partner's out of town because I'm wearing my old jacket. There's no way in hell she would have let me wear this for a public appearance. <laughs> but um, the reason I'm wearing it, because I came yesterday for a little bit, I was absolutely freezing the whole time I was in here. So anyway, um, look, I'm going to be pretty specific here. I'm going to give you some ideas that I think I'm not here to talk about aftershock, aftershock statistics or anything like that. I'm here to talk about what I think where we should be at in 2020. And um, that seems like a long way away, except that every day things are happening in our city that will influence where we are in 2020, okay? New shops are being built, places are expanding, and f don't for a moment think that what happens on the periphery of our city does not affect what our CBD will look like in 10 years from now. All these decisions are important. The discussions you have at your dinner table, the way that you get yourself heard, influences where the city will be. So thank you for coming. We're here because we believe and we're passionate. So give yourselves a round of, a round of applause for that. So let's get into it. Um, I want to start with what I think are some very important simple truths, things that everyone here should know. And uh, the first one is that engineers can do just about anything. We live on a swamp. And there are active faults around us. We're very aware of that now. But geotechnical engineers can do some quite amazing things. However, financially, we, not, we must be responsible. There may be places of the city that it's just not reasonable to build on. These decisions have not yet been made. I don't know about them. But we need to consider that. Uh, the other thing is that CBD planning must not be considered in isolation. A very important point. For instance, if we allow growth to just blast out to the west with more malls and more little fragmentary little bits, that influences what our, C what our CBD is going to look like in, tw in 10, 20 years from now in a major way. So that needs to be considered. Even pre-September, there was a lot of dead wood inside the four abs. I actually think when we talk about the CBD, if we think that, that, that the four abs outline the CBD, we're mistaken. For me, the CBD st stops at about Latimer Square. And everything east from there, there's a lot of dead wood there. No offense if you've got a building there or something like that. But there's a lot of parking lots. There's a lot of light industry. I used to play this game when I was a kid called Sim City. It was a great little game, computer game, building your city. It's a lot easier to do that than rebuild Christchurch in reality, obviously. One of the things I learned in that game right away is you don't put industry right in the middle of your CBD because then people don't want to live there. And that's an issue we've got when you go east from the CBD now. People don't want to live in that inner east. It's because it's not a very attractive place to live. Um, the best CBDs in cities of our size, let's face it, we're not Melbourne. We don't have 4 million people living in our area. We've got 4 million people living in our whole country. The best cities have an injection of, of youth, and there's a lot of gray hair out there, and I, I'm not saying that we don't want to have our mature people living in the CBD and enjoying the CBD. We need you, but we need to have youth in the CBD. And the best way to do that is to have young people living and working in the CBD. We need to have a student village that for, for CPI stu T students and for University of Canterbury students to live and work in the CBD. And it needs to be warm, and it needs to be cheap, 
and there needs to be cheap food, and it needs to be easy for them to get to the university, and if we do that, they will live there. And finally, we need to think a lot about how our city gets developed in the context of our geologic realities. Okay? Let's not in a year from now forget that we had some uh, uh, two major earthquakes that really made things quite uncomfortable here. And let's not for a minute say that we're, we've got clear skies ahead and that we don't have to wait, worry about earthquakes for another 10,000 years. Okay? The decisions we make now, the safety of our city, look at the young children that are here, look at the younger people that are here. The decisions we make now actually influence their safety going forward, in our city going forward. Okay. I'm not able to go forward, I don't think, on this. Can you forward that next slide, please? Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is just to, just to illustrate, um, you know, there was a lot of talk about these, um, these black maps and uh, these, these old little river, river channels running through the city and how, in some cases, like in this area here, there seemed to be some correlation between some of the liquefaction Small amounts of liquefaction, I live in Avonside, that's not really liquefaction. Small amounts of liquefaction in some places here and some building damage in some places here that seem to correlate with old river channels. Now before we get too emotive about this, let's consider this. Geotechnical engineers can fix this problem, okay? We can do, there's a variety of different techniques that geotechnical engineers can do. They can excavate, they can make the ground denser, they can inject things into the ground, they can improve drainage, they can put up lateral walls to stop lateral spreading. They can go deeper with their foundations. They can put gravel in. Let's not, let's not think for a moment that because our CBD is perhaps not in the geologically most ideal place, that we need to reconfigure all of our roads and, and disaban and abandon places that had some liquefaction. Those problems can get dealt with. We don't need to be too dramatic about any of that. Can the situation be fixed? Yes. Would, it, would having these open water, opening these things up, make the CBD a nicer place? It could, but it could also create a lot of difficulties in terms of the grid, in terms of more bridges, etc. Can we make some of our heritage buildings strong and safe in this environment? Of course we can. They might have had bad ground beneath them. There are things that can be done. I do think it, it is important to retain some of our heritage where it's going to be safe and where people are going to actually want to go back into those buildings. If the engineers can convince us of that, then we'll go forward. I'll do my thing again. Okay. All right, now I think this is really, really important because this is something that's happening now. The western side of our city is blowing out. Everyone wants to live out here because they're safer. There's more gravel out there and there wasn't liquefaction. And the fault uh, that ruptured was in this area. I'll tell you what the problem is. If we allow growth to just blast out in this way, which is going on at the moment, we're gonna have increased traffic issues, we're going to have less connectivity with the CBD. We're going to have a bun bunch of urban sprawl, lots of shopping malls, and a real asymmetric city with pretty dramatic transport um, restrictions. I know what a pain in the butt it is to get on some of these roads going out here at peak hour. It sucks. The other thing is, if we want our CBD to succeed, we can't just have growth going on and out here without thinking about what happens here. All right? What happens here? Population uh, in the east, urban decay, loss of land value, more financial hardship, less CBD connectivity between CBD and the ocean. We get a less connected, less populated CBD, and it's a regrettable loss of our central city heart. Now, a lot of cities already made these mistakes for us, places like Los Angeles. They said, let's build these little pockets all around. And then, soon enough, their CBD becomes a wasteland, becomes nothing, all right? So what happens now affects what happens here. We should limit this westward expansion we should focus on densifying population in the CBD, and I'm going to tell you about some ways that, that can be done now, quickly. Not five years, not ten years, but relatively quickly. Next slide. Okay, so here's a little bit of an idea I've got, and some of my ideas are going to be rubbish, perhaps, but I'm going to put them forth anyways for discussion. I live in this area here. I'm one of eight of 23 houses that are still left, still living in the area on our street. Uh, I'd say about half the houses are red stickered, including all of the new houses in that area. We don't have sewage, it's not a nice place to live, and my story is far from unique, and there are people that have it much worse than I, than I do. Now, what would I want? Do I want to still be in there three years from now with no sewage? No, obviously not, right? 
So one option for me is to say, push my insurance company and just get something out west on the plains, a new house or something like that, and away we go. Except that when I talk to my neighbors and I talk to the people in my suburb, the people who live in the east, they don't necessarily want to go out to the west with no disrespect. They want to stay in the east. There's a reason they bought there, and it wasn't because they wanted to experience liquefaction firsthand. <laughs> it's because they like living close to the ocean and they like living close to the city. Here's another reality. When you go east of Latimer Square and you go sort of between Latimer Square and Fitzgerald, there is a lot of wasted space. There's a lot of stuff that looks like this, just parking lots. There's a lot of brick buildings that have fallen down. And there's a lot of light industry, which has no point being in that part of the city. So I have this, um, I have this, someone sort of said radical idea. I have this, I don't know if it's radical, but I have an idea. You take nice houses from these suburbs here, where every house around them is destroyed. You pick them up and you move them into these areas and you create really nice inner city urban spaces while you retain your heritage and you densify your population. You get people living in the eastern part of the CBD because that's what you need. Uh, can I get the next slide? Thank you. This is what I think it would look like, all right? I just got this house on, off a of trade me, so um, I hope it's not yours, but <laughs> there's no legal ramifications or anything. Anyway, here's a lovely house. This is in Avonside. This is for sale. No one's going to, well, maybe someone will buy that. I don't know. Maybe, but they might not. But probably the houses on either side are tilted 30 to 5 degrees one way, and the other one, brick one's got big cracks in it and all that sort of stuff. And this is my street, okay? It's not a nice place to live at the moment. It might be in 5, 10 years, but it's not going to be before then, more likely. Take this house, pick this house up, take this area here, and turn it into this. A narrow little street here with nice green space on either side. Put these houses in there, okay, you're not going to have your quarter acre block, you're going to condense that, you have a tiny little front yard, a tiny little backyard. But the good thing is, is you're going to have a community working garden between those houses where you can all go and chat to your neighbors, you can share your veggies, Everyone knows what a pain in the butt it is pulling weeds. So much better to go there and do that as a, as a group. You build your inner, your inner city communities, and everybody knows we need to have a few pubs. If there's nothing we can't get enough of at the moment. It's pubs. We need to have pubs and dairies, that sort of thing. Turn this into this from this. And you know what? It doesn't cost very much to move a house like that. 20, 30K. That can be done very quickly. One idea. Okay. This may look like a worst nightmare to some of you guys, but um, this, is, this is, my brother sent me this. He's an urban planner in Calgary. This is Garrison Woods in Calgary. And what they've done here is combine this, this um, I don't want to use the term densify. My, my urban planner friends told me not to say densify because it's scary to people. Um, bring more people closer together <laughs> in warmer, cleaner, more environmentally friendly houses with some shared park space, so they can still get that feel of their own little space, and then go the residential above commercial. But you can turn that also into this. And that's the sort of stuff that needs to happen fairly quickly before everyone moves out west and we're left with no CBD options, okay? This is a relatively new community. It was one of the only areas not to lose value during recent recessions in Canada. There's obviously a lot of value in there in that sort of approach. It may not be for everyone, but it may be for some. 